Now let's look at the relationship between carbonate sand with a little bit of clastic sand and the formation of corals on that ramp in the Gulf. And Sam Perkis did a lot of work on this and I'm showing you here his model. And what's, what's striking on this model is you can immediately see, first of all, that yes, we have broad bands. So again, this facies belt. So you can recognize a band of sand here at the very top. You can recognize a band of the orange color, a sparse brown algae, and then a band of the dark color, the dark brown, which is the uh, dense brown algae assemblage. So there are, there are by and large belts, but we can also see just like we, we noticed for the Bahamas and Australia, that there is a patchiness when you look at the detail of the distribution of facies. And again, that can have implication for reservoirs later in the uh, production if this becomes a reservoir. But what I find striking is that where you have the sand, you don't see that much corals. So it's wrong to say that there are no corals on ramp, but it's right to say that corals usually don't form a large volume of the ramp. In fact, purple here represents the distribution of the dense coral framework, and you can see they're very rare, and they seem to be very patchy um, distributed amongst the sand there. And it seems that sand is a large control on whether or not these corals can grow, and they tend to form small carpet, so that's a veneer of coral, on top of either sand or the, uh, the hard ground. And it's also obvious from this that when you have the sand, you can have macroalgae associated with the sand. And so it's very sandy deposits. You have a little bit of dense and sparse corals. And as you go deeper, we go into the algal regime here and it's dominated by the brown algae. Okay, so we have sparse brown algae at first on top of the, of the hard ground and then dense brown algae. And within this brown algae, you can still have some reefs that form. So, so some coral framework that uh, forms. So quite a complex distribution. And we'll look at a few examples of this distribution. So here's my first example from the same authors that basically show the difference between a dense coral carpet and a sparse coral carpet. And it, sends, it seems that the problem with uh, these facies is the presence of those mobile sand sheets. Because when that sand migrates and covers the corals, then the coral can no longer grow. And this is one reason why we don't have clean condition where we can have beautiful corals growing. And on, on that picture here on the right, you can see nice fish and some uh, corals growing, but it's also obvious that the water is quite turbid. There is quite a lot of suspended sediment in the water, which reduce light, light penetration. And so that's a problem for um, further coral growth. Another example here of a dense coral carpet, so away from the, uh, from the sand, but you can also see that we see um, seagrass meadows and these seagrass meadows basically grow on sand uh, or form sand. So we have a lot of carbonate sand production in the system in the same way that we have in the Bahamas. And behind the seagrass meadow, we see our trusted mangroves. And it's very obvious here, if you look at, the, um, at Abu Dhabi, that the mangrove grow here, but they've been limited by the formation of a harbor on their right. And so the, it's, it's a system that is on the decline. Now, if the coral carpet is dense, it tends to have quite a high diversity of different types of corals. So here, for instance, I show you a nice coral that has all the, this, this um, dendrite type of formation, but also in the back, you can see brain corals. And we also have these vertical coral stands. So when the corals are doing well, they can have quite a bit of diversity. The problem is that you never have a large barrier reef the way you would in the Bahamas. And that is really the main distinction between these two environments, the ramp and the, the platform. And you can even have barrier islands that grow on top of the sands. And here's a great example of a barrier island. And what I want to point your attention to in this one is the fact that we have all these complex reticulation here. Now, these are corals. You see them here in the left. 
and it seems that these corals are self-organizing. So where they grow is a function of ecological pressure and that ecological pressure pushes them to organize with these types of cell pattern. At least that's what Perkis and co-author um, concluded from their work. And you can even have islands that are um, further towards the, uh, the basin. And in this case, here's a two examples of um, such islands that form essentially on sand. So when the sand stops moving, you can have reef that starts to form on top of it and they form these reticulated stringer reefs. And you can even have a coral carpet that forms if the sand is not moving for a long time. But the point is, you have more sand here than you have corals and sand uh, form those shoal and form a very important environment of deposition on that ramp. So what happens now if you go into the mid ramp and the outer ramp much deeper? Well, things get a little bit more boring, as you can see on this uh, relatively old map of facies distribution in the Gulf. You can see that as we go deeper, so that means when we go towards Iran, where the, the deepest part of the Gulf is, we tend to migrate into a fishes belt that is dominated by clays and so very fine grained sediment, clay and lamellae branch, so, so um, bivalves. And that's pretty much all that, that there is there. So if I want to sum up what we've learned here in the Arabian Gulf, I would say that generally we are looking at broad fishes belt when we look at the ramp. But the devil is in the detail, especially if you look at the high energy zone, we tend to have more complexity. Keep in mind those reticulated reefs that we've seen that had all these intri intricate uh, geometry at the 100 meter scale, but also the sand shoals, which had lots of patch reef in them. So at the small scale, we're looking at a mosaic of facies within broader belts. And that is important because if you worry about things that are separated by a few hundreds of meters, for instance, production well and injector well, then you have to take into account this heterogeneity. We can also contrast the ramp with the platform. And it's clear that on the uh, Arabian Gulf ramp, we have a gradual transition to the basin. Whereas in the Bahamas, we've seen that that transition is very abrupt because of the, escar the escarpment and that gives you more opportunities for mass transport deposit uh, from the shallow area to the deeper area. So now we've covered pretty much everything we need to know about the facies distribution on both platform and ramp. And we've also covered some of the complexity behind it. In the next class, I will start to introduce sequence photography. Ah. Ah. Ah.